Hello, it's Mr. Rops here, and today we're going to talk about periodic functions. Okay, but I'm going to do a quick review on just functions in general. We haven't looked at them for a while, so we have y is equal to a f of bx minus c plus d. And so each of these variables, a, b, c, and d, all tell us something that's our transformations. And so if we think about our a value, our a value, it is on the outside of the function, on the outside of the function, and so it is going to be vertical, and it is a vertical stretch, or a stretch parallel to the y-axis by a factor of a. And so the coordinate, so the y value gets multiplied by a, where the x value is not changed at all. So it just okay. The b value is inside the function of f. So the b value is going to affect the x value, and what the b value does is multiplication as A is multiplication, B is also multiplication, but it is a horizontal stretch or stretch parallel to the x-axis by a factor of 1 over B. Okay, this is an important one. This is one that's tricky. It's kind of this opposite of what you expect. So when you're inside the function, the operation is kind of backwards of what you expect. Here it looks like you're multiplying, but in fact it divides. And then if we move on to the C value, that is also inside the function so it affects the x value and it is a horizontal translation or a horizontal shift or you could also say a uh, translation along vector c0 and again it goes opposite if it was x minus 1 that means it would go plus 1 and to the right it's opposite of what you would expect because it's inside the function it is your x value that is being changed and finally the last one is D, which often I feel is the easiest one. Is D is here, and that is our vertical translation. It is the Y value, it just gets added D to it. Um, and it just moves it up or down. All right, so those are our view of our parameters A, B, C, and D. So now if we consider this particular question. We're going to sketch y equals 2 cosine 3 x minus 6 pi by 6 minus 1 over this interval. Well, we know if we look at this, let's go over to Desmos and see what we see. So here's our parameter, and I've already set up so it's 2. And so the a value, again, you can see if I change it, it is a vertical stretch. And so the a value changes. The b value is a horizontal stretch and so it's going to if I make it bigger I'm going to if I make this a 4 that means I'm going to divide by or multiply by a quarter or divide by 4 which in essence will bring it closer tighter so if I go away from 3 it makes it wider it goes out because it's okay so and I want to put that back to 3 the C value is my shift left and right and so this is a decimal equivalent, but I've gone, if you look here, I've made it so I'm going by, I'm between negative pi by 2 and pi by 2, and I'm going a step of pi by 6. And so this is 5, or pi by 6. And so what the C value does is it, look at it, it just shifts it back and forth, back and forth. And so there's the original one. And then the D value moves it up and down. It's at negative 1 right now. It just shifts it up and up and down. And so if I'm going to take this graph and graph it accurately, I'm going to look for my maximums and minimums. And so I know it's pi by 6 is a maximum, and pi by 2 is a minimum. And so I'm going to go over here. I want pi by 6 is my maximum at 1, at 1, and my pi by 2 is a minimum at 3. And so I know it's going over by 2, and so it's going over by 2. This will be a maximum over by 2, it'll be a minimum. So 7 pi by 6 is another minimum. And then I'm going to go to 3 pi by 2, which is over 2, be a maximum, over and down. And because of the periodic nature, which means it's a repeating pattern, you can sketch. And it's really hard to do in the pat on the numer pad, but if you put the dots on first, on paper, it is significantly easier to connect the dots when you put these on first. And I've gone for the interval that is asked. And so when you're asked to sketch it accurately, I recommend use the window provided, put on a couple key points, 
specifically accurately and then connect them as such. Okay, so in here though, we have a bunch of important ideas to consider. We recognize that this maximum, I went down to a minimum and then back to a maximum and then back to a minimum and then that cyclical pattern is what we call a periodic function. And the period goes from a maximum to another maximum or a minimum to another minimum or this point to its corresponding point. So the period is how long, how long a cycle takes, cycle takes. Okay, and to calculate the period, what we do is it is going to be, in this case, I know my period goes from pi by six to five pi by six. And so if I know this distance here is a four pi by six, which is a, a four pi by six, which is a two pi by three. So the period in this case is two pi by three. And the way I can find it is there's a formula for period. I know the period is equal to two pi over the b value, okay? And so I know it's two pi, the b in this case is three, so two pi over three is the period. Okay, this is if it's in radians, if you're working in degrees, it is 360 divided by b, it'd be 360 over, over 3. So it'd be, the b, the period would be 120, which is what 2 pi by 3 actually is. Okay, and so that is the period. This is a handy little formula to hang on to. It is quite common to, to see. The next one is frequency, which isn't actually a part of our curriculum, but it may pop up in your science. Teachers would be very excited if I tell you. The frequency is equal to one over the period. Okay, so if the period is two pi over b, the frequency is gonna be one over two pi over b. Well, that means the frequency is then b over two pi is what the frequency is. And a 360 if you're doing it in degrees. Okay, now amplitude, Amplitude is, well, based upon here, I can see that this is kind of like the middle line, and that is what's called the principal axis, okay? This is like the middle, this is the principal axis. And the amplitude goes from the middle line, this, this distance here, how high is it here? Or similar from the middle line to the bottom, the maximum to the middle line, or if you go from the maximum to the minimum, you want half of that distance. And so the amplitude is kind of like the height of the curve. And if you look here, this height is two. And this is two, which is this value here. And so the height of the curve is our A value. And so this is A amplitude. Okay, I'm gonna go to a cleaner diagram. So I here again I'm going to put on my principal axis. My principal axis, this principal axis is D because the basic sine fun cosine function was here. This is the basic sine function or cosine function and it is just shifted down. So the principal axis goes down as well. The amplitude I know is A the period is 2 pi over 360, oh no, oh, 2 pi over b, sorry, over b, or 360 over b. And then finally the phase shift means it goes left and right. And so this one here shifts it left and right. The c value, shifting it back and forth is the c value. And so in this case, it is going to be the C, the shift left and right, shift left or right, okay? And so these are some definitions that you should be aware of um, to help you out with sketching periodic functions.